Welcome to The God Room with Danny Hobble. Danny's art ministry has touched millions of people around the world. For the past four decades, Danny has shared his talent by spreading the Word of God through art. Join us now as Danny shares his inspiration behind the talent in The God Room. Hi, welcome to The God Room. I'm Danny Halbaum, and this is my beautiful wife, Diana Hello. Halbaum. So, uh, today what we'd like to talk to you about is prayer. We have, you know, there is, I know you've heard this many times before, but there is spiritual warfare out there, mm -hmm. and we're in the midst of it. As a matter of fact, we're probably toward the end, almost, where Jesus is coming again, and you've yeah. probably heard that before, too, but things are really lining up in Israel to where it's going to be the end here soon, and there will be a really strong warfare going on, already is going on. And we need to fight for God. And our biggest weapon, one of our biggest weapons that we have in this spiritual warfare is prayer. You know, it's not going to, we're not going to be pulling out swords and bows and arrows to be fighting the enemy. Angels don't do that. They fight with words as well. Mm -hmm. And it's all our words that give us the power you know, to to right. make sure, you know, to go in line with, with God. And, you know, we need to know any, any if you're in a war, mm -hmm. you know, if you're in a wartime and you have a gun, it doesn't do you any good to have that gun with you if you don't know how to use it right. right. I mean, you need to know how to use the gun, you know, to effectively be a soldier for the army that you're with. Mm -hmm. And we're with the army of God. And so what I'd like to share with you is, you know, how to use the weapon that you have, your rifle, your power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to do is, is I'd like, like to bring up a couple Bible verses first. James 5.16, it says, The effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And the second Corinthians for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And even Romans 3.22 says, Even the righteousness of God, by which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon them that believe, but there is no difference. So what we're saying is, you know, your, your biggest weapon is is your, is your prayers and because we are made righteous mm -hmm. in Christ by ourselves we have we are not righteous in fact Paul says we're filthy rags I mean we are if you really look at our lives mm -hmm. you know we have no right nor authority to go anywhere even close to God and bring our prayers to him but because of Christ we have now the righteousness of Christ on us so when God yeah. looks at us he actually sees Christ, yeah. and we have that authority to come before the throne of God. As Paul, as Paul says, to have the boldness to come to the throne of God. Do you understand what that means? And, and this is important in prayer life. I've, I've been teaching this to my sons for a long time, and still am teaching them, and teaching myself. I mean, you know, it's funny. When we teach anybody that is, you know, teaching especially if the Spirit is working through you, and that's the only way that I like to teach, is a lot of times when we teach, actually, we are oh, the absolutely. student yeah, as well as the teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, the Spirit is speaking through Spirit. us, and the words we're saying, there's a part of us that's sitting back going, oh, that's cool, I didn't know that. I have that happen to me all yeah. the time. And, you know, we need to know the weapon that we have, and we need to know who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. That gives us the power for the weapon. If we go before, you know, demons, and we'll get to that later on the session here, but if we go before demons to cast them out, they may not leave if we don't believe it ourselves. If we don't know who we are in Christ, knowing that we are priests of, of, of God, yes. and God has made us kings of God, if we don't know that we have that power and that authority, mm -hmm 
the, the demons will know that within us, and they won't, they won't leave the body when we try to cast them out. You know, it's even like that one, what was it, uh, I think it was Peter, that he said, you know, uh, he went around and he was casting out demons. Jesus told him to go out and cast out demons. And they were doing that, and there was that other, the Jewish guy, I forgot mm. what his name was, do you remember? Mm. And he was another Jewish guy that saw Peter doing this. And he says, oh, he says, okay, I learned all the words. And they went into another house to cast out demons. And the demon himself says, Paul I know, and Peter I know, but who are you? And they literally yeah. beat him up and cast him out because it's not about words. It's, just, it's not just an abracadabra that, okay, you say the words yada, yada, yada in Jesus Christ and things happen. Mm -hmm. It's not an abracadabra thing. It's by faith. And if you know that, if you know who you are in the Lord, mm -hmm. really know that within yourself, the demons and the, and the enemy that's out there will know that you know, and they will take heed of that. And you know, we learn this early on with our children. Yes, absolutely. Because children know if you yeah. have the authority and if you're truly going to uh, do what you say. Enforce because it. Because a lot of times mom will say something, but you know, it, dad is the enforcer. <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to tell your dad. And you know, even as children, they recognize the authority. So you're speaking about demons too. Right. They recognize the authority and they know if if you don't have that faith that they can walk all over right. you pretty much. So you have to know who you are in Christ. Know who you are in Christ. And you know when you really read about that, even in Revelation it tells us that it's, it, it says that you know that we will be judging angels. Now that means all angels which includes Satan himself. We will be judging Satan for the worst that he's done. If we are judges over Satan, that means we are higher in the spiritual realm than Satan is, which also says that, you know, he has made, God has made man a little higher than angels. He has, and in that fact, we will be judging angels. So we are in the spiritual realm mm -hmm. as far as authority and as far as power higher than the angels and the demons right. and the demons are below the angels because the, the word of god says that we are seated with christ right and in heavenly yes. places and when we are we truly know that that's where we are and everything else is down below us then that's true about knowing who we are in christ and right. where we are and again just like my wife pointed out you know even with children it works that way well it works that way with everybody mm -hmm. if they know that you know you know who you are and you have that authority people stand up and they listen and so do demons and so mm -hmm. forth you know the other thing about prayers is I know we've all been through this at some point in our lives is we say okay well prayer is good and I know who I am but I pray and I'm not seeing any results you know why does God not answer prayers you know I have prayed about this and I've never got a, a response to it I don't understand it, and you know, if God hears the prayers, which he says he hears the prayers of a righteous person, and we are righteous mm -hmm. in Christ, and I've prayed about it, why do I not see the results in it? There's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, we have to understand that our timing is mm -hmm. not God's timing. Yes. Now, sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow because you know, we need something, we need it now. And sometimes we do, and we don't see the prayers for it. But it's not, if a prayer goes unanswered, it is not because God has left it. We have left the prayer. And what I'm saying is we have to be steadfast. You know, when we pray about something, we have to continue in, the, in that belief that he's going to answer the prayer. I had a fellow... This is going back many years ago. I never forgot this. This is probably one of the things that has touched my heart more than anything. And it was right at a time that I had turned my back on God for a while and, and I finally came back, rededicated my life. But this fellow was in church and he was talking about himself. And he had been, um, it was in a music career and he was doing a lot of things and was, was quite well known at this time. And he had a father that was a Christian that was praying for him. And 
he finally gave his heart to the Lord, but when he did, he spoke to his father, and his father told him just two weeks prior to him giving his heart what had taken place to make that happen. And what he said was this. His father said that he felt a burden for his son, mm -hmm. the singer, and he got up, and it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, his father was something like 2, so I was 70, somewhere in his 70-year-old range. And he said that his father got up and got out of bed, knelt by the side, and was praying for his son. And his father said, in his own words, he said, he says, when I was praying for my son, he says, I saw and felt Satan come into the room. He says, and I opened my eyes, he says, and I saw Satan standing there. Now, that's kind of shocking as it is, but he says, he saw him standing there, and he said, this is what Satan said, told him. He says, old man, he says, you've been praying for your son oh. for 15 years, he says, and nothing has changed. He says, how long are you going to continue to pray? Don't you see it's an endless road? Fifteen years, he's never going to come to him. He says, and besides that, he says, you're an old man, you're seventy-something years old, you need your rest, you should be sleeping, not getting up in the middle of the night and praying for your son. I'm sorry, it's hard for me not to get teary about this, but he said, as soon as Satan said that, he said, Jesus came into the room. He said, and as soon as Jesus came into the room, of course, Satan took off. And the Lord simply asked him, Do you believe I can save your son? And the, uh, the old man says, Yes, I do, Lord. And he says, Then watch me work. And within two weeks is when his son became saved. So, you know, 15 years he's been praying for his son for 15 years, but he stead, stayed steadfast to it. And that's the point. You know, we need to stay with the prayer. It doesn't matter how long it is, because God's timing is not our timing. I don't know. Maybe if his son would have accepted the Lord sooner, maybe if God would have broke through and accepted it sooner, the timing might not have been right. And maybe, number one, he would have not accepted the Lord at that point. Well, I believe that, um, like you're talking about having faith, well, we have to have faith, too, that God is working in the background. Yes. From yes. what we can't see. So it may take two years of praying, and we might be saying, God, I don't see anything. Yeah. But he's saying, but do you believe? Like when Jesus came in, right. do you believe? You know, And we have to know what we believe and stand on that and realize he is working in the background. He is working things out. He might have to maneuver a hundred different things to get that prayer to be completely fulfilled. So he it's not that he's not answering it. He is answering it, and he is working it out yes. through very many means of working it out. Right. So it's not no, looking with their eyes, but truly, do you believe? And standing on that and having, having peace. And, you know, the, the other thing that we have to remember, too, is He is God. He knows everything. And sometimes we might pray for something and we think, God, you know, you've got to answer this prayer. I need my finances met. We went through that ourselves. Mm -hmm. We were in a financial drought at one point. And we prayed about it and prayed about it. The more we prayed about it, the lower it got. But it came to a reason why God lowered our finances so far down that we were put into a place that we had to have low finances for us to have that miracle. So sometimes the answer to our prayers is a no. But even if it's a no, it's not a no like, no, I don't care about you, or no, I don't care about the situation. It's a no for our benefit. He always, God always has our best benefit in, in or mind. Or it's a no because God is saying, whatever you're praying, I've got something better. Right, okay, better. same. Better, because we don't always know his will in a situation. Right. And we might pray according to what we think would be the best answer. But he sees all things and it's because he has something better. And it's still, we can wait and be in peace as we wait and not go through turmoil and stay steadfast. Right. Believing him. Well, you know, and that brings up another point too. In prayer, 
you know, we, we pray about things. You know, we need finances. We need healing. Mm -hmm. We need all these things that we, you know, yeah. that we're praying for. But, you know, God, you know, we look at things that we need things changed. God, I don't think, I can't say never, but I can say most of the time, if not the vast majority of the time, God is not looking at things to change things in our life. Mm -hmm. He's looking at prayers to change us, right. you know, and, you know, to, to change us. All right, let, let me give you an example. In Elijah, okay, Elijah, he was with the king and they, they had a drought for a long period of time and he was praying for rain. And he had a, a, a servant with him and he, he was praying for rain, and he was with the king, and he told me, he says, okay, well, I'm praying for rain for you. Mm -hmm. And he sent his servant out to go over the hill to go see if there was any clouds, and there was not a cloud in the sky. He came back again, and he says, no, he says, no, master, there's no clouds in the sky. He says, well, I, I know that there's, there's clouds coming. Go take a look again. And he went out again, and he came back. He did this mm -hmm. seven times. And then finally he came back and he said, after the seventh time, not seven times, he made it a, basically a fool of himself and stood in front of the king. He says, going, yeah, okay, here we go again, another time. And the seventh time he came back and he said, well, there's a small cloud. And as soon as he said that, Elijah said, king, go get your chariots and get out of here because there's a storm coming and you're going to be caught in the mud and you won't be able to get out. And that's exactly what happened. But when you look at that scenario, look at what took place. Number one, mm -hmm. God answered the prayer, but he waited seven times. Why did he do that? He could have done it the first time. He could have made it rain just like that with, within a, 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 the split second that Elijah prayed. Number one, he was testing Elijah's. How much are you going to stay too true to your faith? Mm -hmm. Are you going to hold fast to it? Or are you going to say, well, I guess that's it. I, I guess I misunderstood. And we do that a lot, too. And after the seventh time, he made the cloud, but the Bible says it was the cloud of a small hand, mm. which means you could barely see the cloud out mm. there. That's not enough to make a torrential rain, but it was enough for Elijah to say, ah, wow. and his faith. See, God wants us to be interactive in everything that yes. he does. I mean, we've said this many times. Even the, the second coming of the Lord and, you know, for him to take over the whole earth again. God could do that in a, in a second with the word. Mm -hmm. Just boom, and it's done, and everything is, is taken care of. He is going meticulously through a certain process that involves us mm -hmm. as, you know, saints, so that we can share in that glory when oh, it finally does come. That's great. Yeah. So this way here, our workings, he could take care of it like that, but he wants us to do it so we share in the glory. It's like, again, anytime I try to think of God and what he's about, I think of a father and, and child relationship. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it with your kids, okay, we're, dad's working on a car, and he can, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. get this thing wrenched up, and he's got his son with him, and his son is like, oh, daddy, can I do it, can I do it? His father can do it in three turns oh, to get it done. Good point. But he gives it to his son. He says, okay, son, here you go. And you do this and you do that. And he's struggling with it and he's struggling with it, but he finally gets it. Mm -hmm. Now, when it's fixed, the son is all proud. Oh, I fixed the car, whatever. And his father yeah. shares in that glory and his son shares in that glory. So they've shared the glory of fixing the car rather than the father said, no, I can do it easier. Yes. Boom, 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 and take is. off. Mm -hmm. And God is doing that with us too. So it's the same thing, you know, he could have fixed this thing with Elijah, mm -hmm. but he wanted to see just, you know, how much Elijah is going to hold on to his faith. Mm -hmm. And then when he gave him the cloud, he gave him just a small cloud, again, to mm -hmm. see, okay, you now make it the big cloud by your faith. It was the faith yeah. of Elijah by, <laughs> by proclaiming that this little cloud mm -hmm. was going to have a torrential downpour. Mm -hmm. And it was by that faith that made that cloud grow even yeah, bigger. And it wasn't just for him and his day and his hour. Uh, the story of Elijah has gone on through all these centuries, you know, thousands of years later. We are learning the lesson and learning the character and learning the perseverance and faith 
through his story. Right, right, exactly. So it, the story it was so important because it wasn't just for uh, him that day, that moment. And it wasn't just for the people around him. It was for all of us, too, that would later read and learn the lesson and learn, oh, I can stand, you know, in faith like Elijah did. Well, you know, and that, uh, the, I don't, don't want to deviate too much from what we're talking about as far as prayer, but for a quick second here, I just want to make the statement that, you know, people think of the Bible as, oh, that's God's Word, it's a book. It's oh, not a book. Word. If you think God's Word is just a book that was written by people, mm -hmm. you have no idea what the Bible is. Right. It's not a book. How many times, I mean, it, for people who have out there who have read the Bible over and over and you've, mm -hmm. you know, read it and you've reread it, every time that you're reading it, there's something else that jumps out at oh, you. Yes. The Holy Spirit brings something out and that is a constant mm -hmm. feeding of that. So, you know, again, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, that wasn't just written for those people back then who rejoiced yeah. in all of that yeah. and celebrated it. We still do it now. And there's certain sections of that that just a few words of that mm -hmm. can make a whole sermon. God, God is constantly yes. feeding off of that. It is the Word of God. It's not just the Bible. Yes. And speaking of words, we need to know not only who we are in Christ for our, our prayers to be, you know, that powerful, but we also need to know the power of just our words alone. Mm -hmm. There is nothing more powerful probably in, in the universe mm -hmm. than the spoken and written word. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so powerful, they named Jesus himself the word. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how powerful it is. And Jesus has mm -hmm. said, your words are life and death. Yes. Matter of fact, it says that in the Bible. In, in Proverbs 18.21, it says, life and death are the power of the tongue. And so, you know, we, we need to understand that, that, you know, our words are so powerful that they literally have life and death in them. There's nothing more powerful than that. So speaking the words is yeah, important. And, and there are times when we don't know what to pray, but we can look up scripture. A lot of times I go online and look up a topic that I need scripture on, and I speak that scripture over that situation. Right. So when we speak the word of God over it, and because the Word of God never comes back void, our faith, I mean, we have no struggle with faith when we know speaking the Word of God is going to produce something. So, you know, I would encourage people to go to the Word of God over a situation and pray that out loud, speak it out loud. Right. And if you speak it out loud, which, you know, there's authority in that, our words are powerful, mm -hmm. and know who you are in Christ and the authority to say those things, you've got one mighty weapon. Oh, yes. And the and the last one of the last things I'd like to bring up as far as prayer goes, is, you know, we have a tendency, and we all do, mm -hmm. we have a tendency to pray what we need for, and we should. Mm -hmm. If we need something, we come to God. But you know, sometimes, you know, God God says, you know, don't just seek my hand all the time, seek my face too. Mm -hmm. God, what you know. We may need things as far as, you know, asking for our finances or health or situations, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. What does God need? God yes. requires a relationship. Yes. That's what he wants from us. So when we say, you know, you know, when we pray for things, we're seeking his hand. And he says, I have no problem with that. But seek my face too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just, and that's what the God room is all about, yes. is just spending time with him. So we just build up a relationship. Mm -hmm. If we have something to ask for, we do. But sometimes we just want to sit back yes. and just be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Lord needs. And we, we love the Lord, we want to please Him too. Yes. So we hope that, you know, that this has helped you out in understanding a little bit better of the power you have in prayer and how important prayer is in life. And use that weapon mm -hmm. and go about and conquer. Yes, and, our, and always remember our power is in Christ and in the blood of Jesus. So if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, and uh, that's the place to start, you know, is the, in prayer, uh, repentance, and accepting yes. Him as your Lord and Savior, because that is the power, and that's where everything begins, is that initial, you know, forgive me for my sins, Lord, please come into my heart. And He will, and you will receive a power and a peace that 
you just can't even fathom. So we do encourage everyone to go to the Lord if you have not been saved to to do yes, that right now. Important. You can do that right now through prayer, and and you will and you will find the the Savior and the one that uh, will give you life. Amen. There is nothing more important in life than your personal relationship with God. Nothing.